Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, back here on Wager Talk TV with your NCAA Men's Championship preview and analysis for this Monday night, April the 8th. I'm going to let you know how to play this game and also make some money when you do so. Also going to let you know the most public play in this game. I'm going to look at the side in total, let you know where the public consensus is, full detailed analysis, and also a betting opportunity. All that free for you in this video in just a moment. If you're joining us for the first time here on Wager Talk TV, welcome. Make sure you hit subscribe and hit the bell as well. So, you know, when these free play videos go up each and every day of the week, college basketball is done after tonight. This will be the last college basketball video, but I do daily and weekly NBA updates. I'm going to do a daily NBA playoff video each and every day the next couple months and also Major League Baseball free play videos here. So click subscribe and hit the bell. Don't forget also comment below. I read all the comments. Who do you like tonight? Put your favorite side or total. Hey, throw in some player props as well. Include some analysis. Let's win and learn and earn together here on Wager Talk TV. All right, I think we have the two best teams in the country playing. It's a great national championship game, but as has been the case all season long, the line is inflated, and that's because the most public play on this on either the side or total looks like Connecticut. Once again, the public is on UConn in this game, so if you're looking to fade the public, you're going to be going up with Purdue, and you are going to get some line value, though, in this situation. A uh, line opened around 5.5, 6 uh, late on Saturday night. It's now six and a half across the board and starting to hit seven in many locations as we head into Monday morning. And that is because, once again, you're paying a premium to back the national champs, the defending national champs, and the best team in the country, who has now won 11 straight NCAA tournament games by at least 13 points or more. Didn't look like that run was going to continue, but they pulled out and won by 14 against Alabama. Despite the fact they were losing, the game was close for a large amount of that game. UConn still pulled ahead late, missed their team total by half a point. 86 and a half was the team total. They got to 86 and really didn't have to score much down the stretch. And even a very late, meaningless foul on Hurley's son with one second remaining was one foul away from putting them the lines. The team total fell a little short for the second straight game, yet they won and covered once again against another one of the best offensive teams in the country. And I bring that up because Purdue right now in the Ken Palms is the third most efficient offense in the country. Guess what? Alabama just finished the season number two. Illinois number four. Those are the two teams UConn just beat. So for the third game in a row, they're play facing one of the three other best offensive teams in the country. They took care of Illinois and Alabama. Can they do it with Purdue? And oh, by the way, UConn is the number one offensive efficiency team in the country, and they're great defensively as well, ranked fourth overall. Purdue has climbed all the way up to 12th. Keep in mind, they were outside the top 20 when the tournament began five games ago, but they're now ranked 12th defensively. And we have one thing for certain. This will be the 15th time in the last 22 championship games that the number one seed wins the national title. That's a certainty because they're both number ones. But another certainty is it'll be the 19th time in the last 22 games that a top nine offensive team wins the title as UConn and Purdue currently one in three. And most likely it's going to be the 20th time in the last 22 championship games that a top 15 ranked defense wins the title. UConn is fourth, Purdue is 12th. But if they win, they almost certainly probably improve on that ranking. Definitely don't fall much. So once again, uh, the metrics have held. You know, March Madness seems crazy. The BRAC combinations are the billions of trillions. But when it's all said and done, the cream rises to the top. And we always see Blue Bloods win this thing. In fact, UConn has won five other times. They have never lost a national title game. Purdue, of course, has never won the national title. They'll be going for their first. And either way, we have another one seed winning for the 15th time the last 22 uh, tournaments. And it'll also be... Uh, the 20th time that a top three seed has won the last 22 tournaments. Of course, UConn won last year as a four seed, and the only other time another team won outside of that was a seven seed. Oh, by the way, that was UConn in 2014. All right, once again, I do think this line is inflated, but I'm not in a hurry to go against UConn. I've said it all season long. It's UConn or pass for me, as they're the best team in the country. But just to put in perspective how inflated this line is, first of all, the public is on UConn, as I mentioned, so you're paying a premium. If you look at efficiency rankings only, offense and defensive efficiency numbers, UConn should be about a three-point favorite on a neutral court. Both teams played very strong schedules this year, and if you look at a margin of victory versus opponents versus their points allowed and scored, Connecticut would be about a one-point favorite. So different metrics I use to come up with my power ratings vary, but once again, just using margin of victory on the schedule is one. Using efficiency rankings would be UConn by three. So the current line of six and a half to seven is definitely inflated by several baskets. Um, let's look at the money line here. Uh, UConn about minus 300, take back around plus 250 if you shop around on um, Purdue. That means the math is saying a 73% chance UConn wins the game straight up. 
Um, so that means there's a 23% uh, chance that Purdue went, loses but covers. So once again, while the line is inflated, I think UConn's going to win this game, which means it comes down to only a 23% chance they win but don't cover. So it's a tough call on the side. Let's dig a little bit deeper here. Um, the one matchup that's fascinating to me is the two best big men in the country are playing each other. Oh, by the way, Zach Eady's not even the best big man in this game, and I'll tell you why. Klingon's been incredible for UConn. In fact, Illinois, who at the time was the second best offensive team in the country, was 0 for 19 shooting when contested by Klingon in that game a couple rounds ago. That is why UConn went on an incredible 30-0 run against that great Illinois offense, because Klingon is a difference maker. Now, Edie is the difference maker, obviously, at 7'4 for Purdue, but they're going to be going head-to-head -head here. So I do think that eliminates some of the easy baskets that Edie normally gets because Klingon is really good. In fact, I'd say he's better, and the NBA draft board tells you all you need to know. Look at two different mock drafts. The CBS and the NBA.com mock drafts for the NBA right now, updated after this weekend, have Klingon a top-five pick now. Edie is not even a top-20 pick in either mock draft. So the NBA scouts have made it known that Klingon is the better NBA prospect. In fact, he's getting even closer to being maybe a top three pick when all is said and done. And however he does in this game, for both him and Edie, really could dictate where they go in the draft. But once again, Klingon is projected to be a much higher pick, almost 20 spots higher in the NBA draft this summer. So it's pretty crazy to say that Zach Edie's not even the best big man necessarily in this game. So I do think UConn wins the national title. Just it's an inflated number. You're paying a premium. So you might want to look for some other ways to play this game. One option I think might actually be the Purdue team total under 69 and a half. You know, I mentioned that uh, the last weekend, I mentioned the NC State team total under it. It went well under. I mentioned UConn maybe team total over. It missed by a half. NIT final last Thursday, I gave you the Seton Hall team total over. It cashed by a point. So these team totals have been very sharp, have been very tight. And Purdue currently around 69 and a half. But if you look at the uh, matchup here, both teams play extremely slow, especially UConn. They're in the 300s in tempo, but Purdue's in the 200s as well. They prefer a slower half-court game. And if you look at the games they've lost this year, and they haven't lost many of them, um, they've been, for the most part, slower games. Uh, the Wisconsin game, for example, in the Big Ten Championship Final in the tournament a few weeks ago, back on March 16th. Yes, it went to overtime, 151 points, 76-75, but Purdue had only 66 points at the end of regulation in that game, so they would have stayed under this total. They lost to Ohio State back in mid-February. Their only other recent loss, they had only 69 points. So 66 and 69 in their two recent losses. Their loss to Nebraska back in early January, just 72 points. And also they had an overtime loss against Northwestern back on December 1st. So their four losses this season, uh, offensively, they have been around that 70 or lower mark, even though they've gotten over to most other games. And now, once again, they're facing by far the best defensive opponent they faced all season in UConn. So I do think the Purdue team total under 69 and a half might be a better option. I like UConn to win this game, but once again, the point spread is inflated by several baskets. So maybe look at Purdue team total under 69 and a half instead, because if UConn does win, they're going to likely slow the tempo down. And I think also Zach Eady is going to be challenged by Klingon, the best big man he has faced all season, probably the big best big man he has faced in his four-year college career. Hey, chime in. Let me know your thoughts on this game. Who do you like? Side and total? Are you looking at some player props? First half lines? Second half lines? What do you think is the best way to approach this? Comment below. I read all the comments and I reply back. Once again, as far as the public consensus, UConn is a public side in this game from the numbers I'm looking at. Yet another reason why the line is inflated. As far as the total, public leaning a little bit towards the over, but nothing out of the ordinary. As you know, the public normally plays overs and favorites, and that's the case once again in this national championship game, which goes at 9.20 Eastern tonight, Monday, on TBS. Once again, it's not CBS anymore. It's TBS, so make sure you keep that cable subscription for one night longer. It should be a great game between two number one seeds. Oh, don't forget, only one other time in history as a number 16 seed won, and UVA was a team that lost in 18. They came back and, of course, won the whole thing in 2019. Needed overtime, though, against Texas Tech. Purdue, of course, lost to 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson last year. Could they repeat history and win this thing? Well, they're going to have to do it once again as a six and a half to seven point dog. And the math is saying only a 27% chance they win the game straight up. Don't forget to hit subscribe, hit the bell for instant alerts when these videos go live each and every day here on the channel. Also, thumbs up, like if you're finding the useful of uh, this content useful. Don't forget Major League Baseball is here on a daily basis. MLB first pitch, two o'clock Eastern Monday. 
If you're joining us early, you can watch it live at 2 Eastern. You can do live chat, ask questions. If you're watching this video afterwards, check out Wager Talk TV right now for that MLB First Pitch show. And also check out my page for daily best bets in both baseball and basketball. I know College Hoops is ending tonight. I do have a best bet in this championship game tonight for my clients. If you want my top best bet tonight in the title game, it's available right now on my page, stevemerrillwagertalk.com, along with daily NBA and Major League Baseball best bets and free plays as well. Get a free play each and every day on my page, stevemerrillwagertalk.com. And while you're there, check out a special promo code for this week as well, which saves you even more. Once again, daily free plays for basketball and baseball, including Monday right now, stevemerrillwagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut WT dot buzz slash sm go there right now and get a strong play for monday free for you as i do every day free plays each and every day to help you build your bankroll at wagertalk.com hey thanks for watching be sure to comment again i love all the comments thanks for your support this year on these college basketball videos and be sure you subscribe and hit the bell because i will continue this throughout the baseball season and also the nba playoffs right around the corner in a couple weeks i plan on doing daily nba playoff videos as well to help you win and learn and earn here on wager talk tv Enjoy the game tonight. Best of luck, and I'll talk to you again soon.